Hello everyone. Today I will be speaking on monoclonal antibodies and their clinical insights. Friends, I'm Dr. Shilpa and presently I'm working as a professor in Lloyd Institute of Management and Technology. So, as we all are amidst a lockdown because of this COVID-19 pandemic, we ought to know what are the different treatments going on for COVID-19. So, one of the uh, trials which are going on are also for monoclonal antibodies. And here, we will be talking about monoclonal antibodies. What is their, uh, uh, what is the definition? What is the production strategy for it? And where all we are using these antibodies for? Uh, the ones which, well, places where we are already using and the places where we will be using now. For example, now we are, we are now trying it for COVID-19 also. So the complete insight about monoclonal antibodies I'll be telling you just now. So starting with the uh, next slide, I'll be uh, con con finishing the definition, the discovery, the hybridoma cell production, the, and the application part. And in the application part, I'll be telling you what all are we, we are using these monoclonal antibodies for. So, starting with the definition, I'll first read out. They are monospecific antibodies that are same because they are made by identical immune cells. Now, when I say identical, I mean that whenever an antigen is induced into our bodies, our body produces an, a response and that response is in the form of antibodies. Now, we have various uh, or I can say numerous antibodies against a specific antigen right so if suppose we want to isolate a specific antibody only and not the entire clone different clones of antibody this is very much possible and this technique or the antibodies developed by this technique are called monoclonal antibodies so uh, in short we call them MAB M-A-B or M-O-A-B but more popularly we call them as MAB right next all discoveries related to monoclonal antibodies in short i would just like to mention that scissor milstein and george kohler in the year 1975 they are the main people who produced these monoclonal antibodies using myeloma cells now that sounds very strange when you mention the word myeloma because myeloma means the cancerous cells but yes here they used myeloma cells for uh, producing monoclonal antibodies and for which they were awarded a Nobel Prize also. We have other scientists also involved in homoclonal antibodies which you can see here as well. Next, how are the monoclonal antibodies produced? For explaining this, I will turn up to the next slide and then maybe come back to the slide so that you can easily understand better. So, uh, starting with the steps involved, the very first step is immunization. Now, when I say immunization, it means that the an animal or a human being is immunized with an antigen, right? And with respect to the antigen, antibodies are produced. So here, we they used a uh, mice, as you can see, a mouse was used, and antigens were injected into this mouse. In response to the antigen, antibodies were produced, and it was these antibodies which were to be isolated. Now, we all know that antibodies are released by the B cells, right? So, B cells are responsible for producing antibodies. And the major source of B cells is the spleen. So, now you must have understood what I am trying to say. Splenectomy was the next step. That is, the spleen was isolated from the body and the antibodies were remo removed from them. That is, the B cells were removed from them. So, after the splenectomy was fusion. So, fusion means the fusion of what? There must be some other cell also with which we will fuse the B cells. Sorry. So, the B cells were fused with the myeloma cells. Now, here the term myeloma comes. Now, what exactly and why did they use the myeloma cells is myeloma cells has a very good property of uh, never to die. It's immortal right and B cells have a property to die. So, the myeloma cells were fused with the B cells in order to produce a hybrid, right. So, after the fusion, 
right? We when now when we fuse B cell with myeloma cell, you get several type of hybrids. You will get one hybrid where B cell is fused with B cell, another hybrid where myeloma cell is fused with myeloma cell, and another hybrid where B cell is fused with the myeloma cell. Now, which particular hybrid are we requiring? B cell with myeloma cell, and the other hybrids are to be rejected. Now, how is this possible? Well, friends, this is very much possible if we do this by selecting the hybrid by using a medium which is called HAT medium. That is HAT medium. I go to the next slide. I have mentioned here. See, it's written here. Selection medium is HAT medium. Now, what does HAT stand for? HAT stands for hypoxanthine, aminopterin, thymidine medium. Now, this medium was discovered by a scientist named Littlefield. So, what he did was uh, he added three major constituents: hypoxanthine, aminopterin, and thymidine. Now, uh, for for doing this, we first have to understand what is salvage pathway and de novo pathway. Now. salvage pathway and de novo pathway if you might have heard are the two pathways for synthesizing purines and pyrimidines now the thing is that de novo pathway is not successful in this medium because in de novo pathway we use precursors such as amino acids carbon dioxide and dihydrofolate right now in order to produce dihydrofolate we need an enzyme and that enzyme is tetrahydrofolate reductase tetrahydrofolate reductase is unfortunately inhibited by the constituent aminopterin i rightfully mentioned aminopterin behind for hat medium if you remember so aminopterin inhibits the enzyme tetrahydrofolate reductase which in return does not allow dihydrofolate reductase to synthesize and therefore the purines and pyrimidines will not be synthesized by this method so the cells which are synthesized by de novo pathway ultimately die and in this case let me mention the cells are the myeloma cells which die by this pathway the other pathway is salvage pathway now in salvage pathway it is based on the principle of recycling that is whenever the dna and rna of our body uh, you know starts breaking up the purines and pyrimidines are also broken up so again uh, by the process of recycling they get regenerated right so in salvage pathway basically two chemical constituents are used hypoxanthine and thymidine and both are very much present in the hat medium hypoxanthine is responsible for forming the purine uh, inosinate and thymidine is responsible for producing the pyrimidine orotate now inosinate and orotate are the precursors for purine and pyrimidine respectively and b cells in this case are successfully produced because they grow by salvage pathway right so now i hope you must have got a hint what i'm going to say next now the problem is if we have a high, if we have a combination of b cell and b cell so b cell b cell combination we cannot survive though they are successfully growing through the salvage pathway but other ways if you see they don't have the immortal property so eventually they will die if we have a combination of myeloma cell myeloma cell they have the property of uh, going uh, you know uh, never to die situation they have but at the same time they grow by de novo pathway so when they are growing by the de novo pathway ultimately they will die because de novo pathway is not successful right so the only hybrid which can survive is the b cell and myeloma cell hybrid reason b cell survives by the salvage pathway it is not immortal but the myeloma cells are immortal and myeloma cells can die if they uh, are going only because they are growing only through the de novo pathway so if, so if both combine together they exchange their properties and that is how they survive so this is how the monoclonal anti antibodies are produced this is followed by cloning or by dilution then screening and then finally the production so now the next is where are we using these monoclonal antibodies we are using them in several areas right now 
for example in cancer the way they how how they work is they bind only to the cancer cells specific antigens induce an immunological response against the target cancer cells right and there are several approved maps maps i mean are the monoclonal antibodies of course which include uh, bevacizumab cetuximab and several more i'll be showing you later on in the uh, there's a table also where i have uh, sh shown all the maps which are being used currently then uh, besides that the monoclonal antibodies are also being used in autoimmune diseases okay then they have been also used for diagnostic tests right and also most importantly presently going to the situation of covid 19 yes my friends maps are also being used for treating covid 19 they are still under clinical trial but very soon they will be uh, in the market we hope and pray that there is a treatment for covid 19 and we come out from this so uh, i can show you one or two examples as well for example the utrecht university in netherlands is working on these monoclonal antibodies and they have taken the origin as fully human because uh, taking fully human you know makes uh, makes it prone to less reactions and then if you want to see the complete discovery regarding this you can see it in the journal nature communications and i have attached a link also you can very well click on this link and uh, see the details the other uh, university is, uh, where we are using this trial or the other research institute i should say precisely is the israel institute of biological research they are also developing monoclonal antibodies and they have almost completed their all stages and trying to uh, you know uh, now market it also for further details you can again click on this particular link then these are the various uh, anti um, maps which i just mentioned previously as well which are now being used and they are being marketed also for various diseases as i have mentioned here here i can you can see several maps which are used being used for anti inflammatory diseases now anti inflammatory include rheumatoid arthritis ulcerative colitis right kidney transplantation allergic asthma etc so they are being used for all these kinds of diseases successfully then they are also being used for anti cancer and other diseases like infections in children and so on so you can see they have a great role already and i hope and pray that we also get a significant role in covid 19 for which the trials have already begun thank you so much friends i hope this uh, this was a useful slide so again stay home stay safe thank you